Welcome back. Our next guests would like us to live our best lives better. And if you're at all like me, then you're never going to say no to that. <laughs> so our next guests are the founders of Beanstalk Social. Stan and Stanley Dalton are a father and son dynamic duo. And I would like to welcome them now. Thank you both for being with us. And let's talk about Beanstalk Social. Number one, I love the name. It just feels like I'm climbing higher and higher and really growing, you know, just constantly growing, which is super. But you guys have taken a whole new approach to what we've come to know as social media. So I'm so excited to hear about how you got here and where this is going. Thank you, Lauren. It's good to be on your show. And thank you for having us today. I think Stanley may start off today, maybe talking, uh, telling you a little bit about what Beanstalk is exactly. And then maybe I could jump into maybe the inspiration, like you kind of mentioned there at the beginning. So, yeah, no problem. And thank you for having us as well. Um, so Beanstalk is a life experience platform. Um, essentially, it's answering one of the most searched for questions on the web, which is, what is there to do today or what is there to do this weekend or even what is there to do during Christmas time in Denver, Colorado? Um, and I think that's a question that a lot of people ask themselves every single day. Uh, Beanstalk is filled with hundreds of thousands of experiences ranging from hikes, local restaurants to try tourist attractions, roadside attractions, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, and it's adding more every single day. I mean, users are getting on it and they're they're contributing to those experiences and you can go ahead and find them, save them, share them, like them, comment on them. Um, we, we honestly believe we've taken the best aspects of these top platforms, combined them into one and uh, given people the ability to engage in a community element if they want or just use Beanstalk from day one without ever engaging with anyone. So you can actually tune in and take the information, benefit from the information, or you can become an active participant. And I think that's a lot of people like to have that option, but tell us how, so Stan, the inspiration, where did this come from? Yeah. So the inspiration actually happened before COVID. You know, I started, I read an article one time about how we started seeing all these horrible statistics in the world, like suicide and divorce rates and self-harming rates were increasing. And it happened to be that this article was written that it coincided directly with when social media came on the scene. And so it only got worse when COVID came around. We saw the vitriol speech. We saw the degradation of society play out right in front of us. We saw, you know, our rights being taken away. And we saw this negativity that came out of COVID as well. And that was fueled by what had happened prior to that. And so the thought came to, our, to my mind is like, there had to be a better way. There has to be a better way that can promote promote positivity in a person's life, something, a way that would allow someone to find value in the things that they're doing and to be, have a safe place to showcase that. And so really the inspiration of Beanstalk came with all those things in mind and trying to build the greatest platform that would allow a person to participate in all those great things that life has to offer and to showcase it in a very safe environment. So that was the inspiration behind Beanstalk. And I love that. I love that it really has been designed for everyone. And when I think of what you guys are, are setting out to do here, and you're actually doing it, is to encourage people to have experiences, have adventures, live your life, don't spend your life on social media. Don't live through someone else. Rather, learn from what the other people are doing and then take it on and make it your own. So in fact, living your best life better is, um, you know, it's kind of a rallying cry. I feel like you guys have taken on a whole new mantle. So how long have you actually had people participating on Beanstalk already? So, so we've had, we've been working on Beanstalk for the last three years, but in that three years, we've been doing a lot of different studies, empathy studies, AB testing. We've been doing um, 
emotional studies. We've been listening to what our, our groups, our focus groups have been saying and trying to make it better. So really for the last year, we've had um, people that have been interacting on on our platform, but not we haven't opened it up to the masses because we were just trying to refine it. So it's been it's been somewhat of a slog trying to get it just right, and we're getting there right now of of, of a product that we really feel is really intuitive and great. But you know it's only getting better each day, and so really for the last year we've just been improving it, and before that we were just making it the best platform that we could and trying to meet all those parameters that I just mentioned earlier of what we hoped it would provide to people. Well, I'm always so impressed and, and really honor uh, people who start up businesses at all anymore. To your point, that early stage is a slog. It's exciting. You've got the vision, but you really have to do the work. And it seems like that's, you know, you've really come to an inflection point now where you've got enough people using it and you've got enough data and research. And certainly the early press is seeing, um, you know, the platform described, I love this, the platform is described as the answer to the question, what is there to do? And anywhere, right? Whether I'm in Rockville, Maryland, or if I'm in I don't know, uh, Prague, Czech Republic, I can, I can tune in and find out what people are recommending for me to do or what you've done and why it was great and then get some guidance and putting that power in my pocket, right? Isn't that, isn't that the key is that now I'm connected to you in a really positive way. You had this experience. Now I'm going to make it my own. So what what are you seeing in terms of the actual people using it? How are what are they using the most? Is it travel? Is it food? Is it something else? Uh, I'll take this one if that's okay to add. Yeah. And and um, you're exactly right. It is answering that question. Um, the the crazy thing is that people are using this in so many unexpected ways. Uh, it's kind of blown away all expectations of what I had for the app. Um, and what our team has had for the app on how it would be used. We have people who are using it for traditional travel. We have, uh, for example, a military wife that's living over in Europe, and she is just going crazy, putting stuff all across the whole European continent because she takes all these weekend trips, going from the most famous landmarks to the uh, most hole in the wall places that you'll ever see. But it's creating this or instilling this desire for me to want to travel and kind of go off the beaten path. But then you have on the the other side of the spectrum, uh, a couple of users who are creating it and showing off summer style or fall styles and creating fashion experiences or uh, fitness experiences. And so the way that we intended it to be used has completely gone out the window and we're seeing so many cool and creative ways that people are using it to show off what they're doing in life and what they believe is important and finding their communities. So is it, this is where my brain goes with this. This sounds like an opportunity for the people who are actually using it and sharing and creating new ways to use it to become a new kind of influencer. That's a you know, that's our, our big term used to be brand ambassadors. Now we've got influencers and everyone can do it. But is that what you're finding that people are now interacting with the app and with the community in a way that is it going to make them famous <laughs> is what they're I think is what what they're asking. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think it's pretty cool to see it on the app. And you said it right on, Lauren. I mean, it it actually is. It's breaking the mold of what traditional influencers are. I mean, you used to see traditional influencers be travel and fashion and beauty and makeup. But the great thing about Beanstalk is, is it we're starting to see people that are being in that are being influential influential in the things that they like you know maybe just reading or the type of books they read or a type of dog breed that they raise and so we're seeing like we're seeing that people are able to find value 
in the things that they like to actually do, which is kind of a of the different way of thinking than what it was in the past with traditional social media. So a person on Beanstalk can truly find value in even the things that they like to do and not have to feel the pressure about how they're looking or where they're traveling to or whatever. They can actually find the value in those small things or those big things in their lives that they that they like to do their hobbies and the things. So yes, we are seeing that right now on Beanstalk, which makes it even more exciting to me because that's what we were trying to accomplish in the first place is that to allow people to find value in the things that they're doing in life and be able to showcase it in a very organized and safe manner and a reason now to do it. So that's so how do you cool. monetize this? Is this through ads? Is it through the destinations are the, you know, the places and the products that are, that are now being showcased. Are they showing up for you and saying, Hey, we want to be part of this game too. Yeah. 100%. Um, we have traditional channels. We have the ability for businesses and influencers and commercial accounts to advertise their content that's on there uh, to have impression space. They can also boost it. And then they can also sponsor categories or they're like hashtags on Beanstalk. And um, they can push their content to a very broad audience. But uh, one of the great things about Beanstalk too is these businesses, these influencers can just create the content for free and reach their target audiences. Um, and then also include the links. They can include uh, location information, purchase information, all this other stuff right there and very specifically target their audience just through the natural organic content that they put on. Amazing. I know our viewers are going to want to know more because I know our viewers travel and they cook and they read and they love to be in the world. So they are going to absolutely love Beanstalk. How do they find you? So we're on all the major app stores uh, where they can get on um, the Apple store and they can find us or Google Play store. We've been built with a programming language that is built for for those things. Um, a native language. native language. That's what I'm looking for. A native language. <laughs> so they've been built natively. So it's on all the major app stores. Someone could go on and download it right now, actually. Perfect. So if they go to either Google Play or the Apple um, app store, you can find it under Beanstalk. And is there a website that they can go to to learn more? There is, yes. And uh, just to help the, the viewers as well, if they don't see under Beanstalk under the first one, if they type Beanstalk Social, it will be showing up under the app stores, but both searches will work. Our website is uh, www.experiencebeanstalk.com. Fabulous. Gentlemen, thank you. I'm very excited. Like literally my brain just went, okay, we got to go there. So, <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing with us today. I appreciate your coming on and I will look forward to sharing all of this with our viewers. I know this is going to be great success. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Lauren. It's been a pleasure today. Thank you so much.